this massive stone here. This is the upright pair to that one that fell and broke. We don't know when. But here's the flat back of it. Here's the flat back coming down here. And then there's a big bulge at the bottom. So what this tells us gives us an idea of how much stone has had to be removed to create this flat back. And it's a lot of stone. Clearly, you don't need to remove that. It's below ground. You're not going to see it. And also, it helps the more mass you've got at the bottom, the better. I think the reason that this one failed is that this stone here is an absolutely stupendous stone. It's the tallest standing stone in the British Isles. It's a beautiful, elegant stone, and it's buried very deeply in the ground. This was the one that Gowland straightened in 1901. And before he straightened it, it was leaning on that stone. It's pushed that blue stone out of vertical. So you can see the angle that it was at, but it was still embedded in the ground. So that's about eight or nine feet that in the ground still underneath there. But this one, I think they found that and they needed a stone to get up to that same sort of height, but this one wasn't really quite long enough. How long it stood, we don't know. It may have fallen over and must have been picked it up. But we have no historical record about when this one went. But you know, it's twice as thick as that one. And originally, we think that this was probably about 60 tons in its original form. Which I think adds some weight to the argument that they probably did some of the preliminary shaping on the Marlborough Downs, so as not to bring enough or more weight that's necessary. While the sun's out, can we all come over here? Can we all come, all come this way? All come this way, a bit further, bit further please. Uh, come on, out the way, out the way, come on. Over here, over here, over here. Right, because... Oh, I want the sun...